Hi, it's Monday, September the 18th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through Paul's letter to the churches in Galatia. So today it's Galatians 3, verses 6 to 14. Um, I mean, this is the ongoing uh, tension, uh, basically. Um, the churches in Galatia were Gentile churches that became Christian, right? So they're not Jewish. They're not, they weren't initially familiar with Jewish tradition, Um with, you know, uh, rituals and practices and all that. So they didn't keep kosher. They weren't circumcised. Um, They didn't know the laws of Moses, all that kind of stuff. Um, But then there were Jewish Christians from Jerusalem who who felt that the best way to really follow Jesus, the best way to have a, a relationship with God was to see Jesus as the embodiment or the extension of the Jewish tradition. So you should also be circumcised and keep kosher and do all the things that you did as a, as an observant Jew. Um, the churches in Galatia didn't used to do that, but now they're starting to do that. And this is a problem for Paul. And that's what Paul's, that's pretty much what this letter's about. And so we heard, um, uh, last time, so that would be Friday, uh, at the beginning of this chapter, um, Paul asking the Galatians, so, so like, you know, how, and when did you receive the spirit? When, when did you receive the Spirit? Was it from learning lessons and laws, or was it from Jesus? And if you got the Spirit from Jesus, then why are you letting go of that to learn the lessons and the laws? Um, And so we'll continue in that vein as uh, Paul continues his challenge. So here it is. It's Galatians 3, 6 to 14. Just as Abraham believed in God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so you see those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believed are blessed with Abraham who believed. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everything who, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Now, it's evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the one who is righteous will live by faith. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Is that clear? (laughs) Well, let's see if I can break it down a little bit. And and, and I don't mean just for you. It just sort of helps me to to, to break it down a little bit. So we'll start off with that with, you know, the father of the faith is Abraham. And everybody knows that. And and, and as... uh, as, as Jews, they prided themselves on being descendants of Abraham. That's, that's what's important, right? Um, that whole tribal sense, too, of, of, of all being in this together. As long as we stay children of Abraham, we are covered by Abraham's covenant. God, God loves us, right? We, we are in relationship with God because of that covenant with Abraham. So as long as we're Abraham's descendants, we're good. And they did that. Um, well, it was a matrilineal thing, but they basically did that. Uh, through family, through through blood, we are we are all here. So we know and we know the law. That's fine. But the big thing is we are we are tied in uh, by blood. Well, that's not going to work for the Galatians, is it? Um, but more than that, Paul says. Paul says, yeah, but but wait a minute. The father of the faith believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So so Abraham's in relationship with God in. The right relation with God, the the the, the relation that, that allows for a covenant, right? That that's the thing, right? And everyone would nod. Well, yeah, of course that's the thing. Yeah, but there was no Jewish faith yet. Abraham did not keep kosher. Abraham did not go through purity rituals uh, on the Sabbath. Pure uh, Abraham did not know any of the six hundred thirteen mitzvahs, uh, the various commandments and practices. Well, he didn't know any of those things, and yet he was right with God. And, and when God says, I will make you a father of many nations, Paul's turned that around and said, you see? So God even told him that he would be, he, that he would be the father of the Gentiles, the nations of the Gentiles, same, same thing. 
So Paul says, so see, this was always God's plan. Always God's plan that we would come to faith the same way that Abraham did. Not through the law, but through faith. So for Paul, true sons of Abraham are the ones, or children of Abraham, are the ones who, ex who, are, who accept God by faith. Not by the rules, not by the traditions of Jewish custom. Now, Paul was an expert in those in his time, uh, but he's saying, no, you know, but now, now you have Jesus, you don't need that. And, and, and to go further, I mean, because he said this before, we've heard it the last couple of days, we've heard Paul saying this, and, and you wonder, well, okay, but can I? I mean, does it exclude me from being in the best relation with God? Um, because, you know, me personally, uh, Norm Seeley, I'm kind of a, an open universalist guy. I'm like, this faith works for me. My faith does not negate your faith. I don't have a problem with that. Obviously, I like my faith better, but I like it because of how it fits me. I'm not going to say that your faith can't put you in relationship with God. I I don't know. I don't I don't live as you do. I don't am not you. I don't have your experiences. Your I don't know any of those things. I only know what I know, and I know what works for me. So I don't insist that everybody has to have what I have. And it seems that Paul, however, doesn't share that. Paul seems to now be of the opinion that, in fact, if you are following those Jewish traditions uh, and, 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 and holding on to them, you are denigrating his faith. But more than that, as, as a pers person, you are, you are suggesting that you don't trust Jesus, that you don't trust your, yourself and what you've discovered, the spirit you have found uh, through Jesus. You're saying, yeah, but maybe, maybe it's not enough. And he's saying, no, you, you have to trust. It's got to be enough. So Paul is being kind of binary there, which I don't agree with personally. Um, but that's me, and that's fine. Paul's not asking for me to agree. Paul's telling me the truth as it is, as he sees it. Um, but he then does another thing that, that, that I think is, is, is pretty good. So, so he, he's going to make an, an argument for why you don't want to, to go with the law and you want to stay with, with Jesus. Um, and uh, it, I think it's an interesting uh, argument. So he says, uh, he, basically he quotes Deuteronomy. He quotes a bunch of things here, but he quotes Deuteronomy. Cursed is everyone who does not observe uh, and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Cursed is everyone who does not observe all the things written in the book of the law. Well, like I said, there's 613 mitzvahs. There are a lot of laws. And I think Paul's suggesting if you want to live under the law, then you'd better observe all of them. Right? If you think that your relationship with God is, is, is based on or is earned by your observing all of the rules, you'd better observe each and every one of the rules. God doesn't prioritize you can't prioritize. So thou shalt not murder uh, is um, equivalent to you shall not mix fabrics. Things you're not supposed to do. Um, uh, committing adultery, eating bacon, same thing. If you're gonna, if you're, if you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. So if you are going to live by the law, if your relationship with God is going to be based on the law, then you had better cover all of it. And I think he knows full well that anybody listening to him or hearing this letter or contemplating it realizes, yeah, I can't do it all. I don't. I can't do it all. No. Just when I think I've got it right, all of a sudden I'm lusting in my heart. Oh, shoot. No, I'm okay. That's great. Oh, but I do covet my neighbor's car <laughs> or his ass, whatever it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. All of a sudden, I didn't stay outside of the community long enough after I had touched blood. Um, like, yeah. in essence, to me, what Paul is simply saying is, if you're gonna if you're gonna make this a rules based relationship, then there is really no room for grace. Grace is what God offers us that does understand who we are. 
and understands when our minds entertain unkind thoughts, but then disperse with them quickly. We don't, we're not held to account for that. We might think that, but we don't act on it. And we, and we, and we remind, no, stop that. No, no. Why am I envious of my neighbor's property? No, I'm letting that go. No. Why do I want to kill that guy? Calm down, Norm. That's just a little anger in the moment. And it's all right. You can let that go. I, but, but if I'm law-based, I was a horrible sinner just a second ago. But if it's based on grace, God knows who I am. So why would you want to go into that rules mentality when you have God's grace? And on top of that, with the rules-based mentality, which is, which is what um, some of the descendants of Abraham, the, you know, the biological descendants of Abraham did as we created this Jewish tradition. Um, but what happened is we found ourselves again and again deeper and deeper in debt as it were, realizing we were not living up to it. We couldn't keep all the rules and all the rituals and we have bad moments and we have good years and then we have bad years and all of that to the point where we were so, in, in, in an effort to keep to all the rules, we became so disconnected from God that we were now failing horribly. But Jesus coming to the cross pays that debt for us. So we were living rule-based and discovering that we were not living up to our end. We were in debt. But Jesus on the cross redeems that. And so the debt is paid. So now we are freed from that obligation. Having been freed from that obligation, why are you going back to it? Don't go back into debt. See, as soon as you go back into the rules and regulations, you're just going to end up in debt again because you're not going to keep all the rules and regulations, are you? Who is? This is Paul's argument. It's not my argument, by the way. This is Paul's argument, just to be clear. Um, there is that neat line, um, uh, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree in order that Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham, might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You know, what? Uh, um, but wasn't he on a cross not on a tree it's a great image really well thought out by paul and i give him full credit for it um it, it, it is a it is a, it is an old quote from hebrew scriptures it does not refer to crucifixion at all uh, but it, it, it refers to the way that heinous criminals were were displayed basically so well much like um i know more of it from sort of english history um, but lots of groups do it, you know, when you defeat your enemy, um, or when you execute a, a bad guy, you, you stick his head on a pike for all to see, look, you know, the rule of law defeated that person or this king defeated that person. They're no longer a threat, um, meant to frighten those who would oppose the king or do bad things. Um, so that's what happened there. So somebody who was, 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 was horrible and bad. Uh, upon their death, they would hang them from a tree that everyone might see them. Uh, and, and in many ways, that was worse than death. It was humiliation. So the family of that person are humiliated. His memory, his legacy is humiliated. It's humiliation. It is, um, it is the extreme version of airing your dirty laundry in public. I mean, that's what it is. Look at that horrible person think of all the horrible things they did and there they there they hang in infamy disgusting that's the image and i think what paul wants us to realize is that jesus on the cross if we are observers of it it's disgusting because he is displaying all of the humiliation of humanity all of our debt all of our transgressions all of the ugliness that is us that's why we can't live up to our relationship with God if it's law-based. Jesus does that all, shows it all there, hangs from that tree, hangs on that cross on our behalf. But rather than humiliating us, his family, he actually redeems us. And why would you go want to go back to humiliation? Paul says, living by rules and regulations. That only leads to humiliation because you're not going to live up to it 24-7. You're just not. And I think there's something in that. 
Um, yeah. Now, to be fair, there are those who quarrel with um, his quote from Deuteronomy. So, the quote was, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the law. All is an important word there. Because if you go to Deuteronomy now, look it up in your Bible, whatever your translation is, it probably says a version of, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey the things written in the book of the law. So the question is, did the text of Deuteronomy used to say all, and that's what Paul's quoting, and then they took it out? Or is Paul over-exaggerating that Paul stuck all the th in there? You got to obey the things written in the book of the law. And Paul said, yeah, you got to obey all the things. Well, the text may not have said that. It's hard to know. There are there were those who said, oh, yeah, no, it said that. But but the Jewish elders, they, they suppressed it. Um, uh, yeah, really, do you think? Because because the the the, the Jewish leaders that, that I have met um, through the stories of Jesus, they would have loved laws and they would have loved the idea that you have to obey all of them because that would have increased their power if we're going to believe that they are those people. Now, if they were a little more moderate and open, then yeah, maybe they would have downplayed it. Suppress is a tough word. May have downplayed that word and so it's just... It, it, it failed to be reproduced in, 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 in later texts. I, I don't know. I just want to point out, I know it's a controversial word. Um, I know that because this is what I do for a living. <laughs> and so these little the little things like that that pop up. Yeah, it's the Deuteronomy all. Is it really there or is it not there? Um, I don't know that it's there. I know the point that Paul is trying to make. And that is if you're going to live by law, you're always going to fail always going to be a moment of failure. But if you live by grace, you don't have to live in fear of the mistakes you're making. Right? Because, because it is by God's action that you are in, 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 in this good relationship, not by your action. And so then your actions follow from the joy of that relationship as opposed to trying to earn that relationship. And that's important to Paul. And, and that is important to me as well. Um... So that sort of breaks down what I think Paul is saying, but um, it's the opening line that is the real challenge to me. Let me repeat it to you. I know this sounds like a preaching technique, but honestly, as I was reading it, I went, oh, right. Yeah, I know this. I hadn't thought about it, that's all. So here's the opening line. Just as Abraham, quote, believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, so you see those who believe are the sense of Abraham. Okay, the quotes from Genesis. Um, just as Abraham believed God. It's not believed in God. It's believed God. God told him that he would be the father of many nations. God told him that his descendants would be more than the more than more than the sand in the desert, the stars in the sky. God told him many things about their relationship uh, and that, that God would be with him. God told him these things and Abraham believed them. It's not that Abraham believed in the concept of God. It's that he believed God. So you can say, yes, I believe in a supernatural being or I believe in a, in a, in a, in a great otherness in the universe, something that is beyond my comprehension. There's a greater intelligence or a greater... But... But do you trust it? Do you believe this greaterness to be compassionate and kindly disposed toward you? Don't necessarily mean you personally as much as I might mean humanity or creation. Do you believe that God cares? It's not about believing in God. It's about believing what God says. And that's the challenge for me some days. Because I can be frustrated and wonder if God has given up on me. Even though Scripture assures me that won't happen. I can despair at humanity sometimes and wonder if God's ready to throw, throw the towel and just give it all up. Um, 
But if I believe God, not believe in God, if I believe God, then I know that that's not the case. I believe what God said to Abraham, and I, and I hold that. I believe what God says to me in Jesus, and I hold that. But I have to remind myself of that sometimes. Sometimes when it's getting tricky or difficult, or if I'm going to be in a discussion or, some, or in the company of someone who, is, who does not approve of my faith at all, I will sometimes want to just sort of mute it down a little bit and turn it into a discussion over a beer about believing in the concept of a greater intelligence, a greater guidance in the universe. You know, the arc of the universe bending towards justice or beauty or however you want to use that quote. Um, I can have that discussion and most people will not go, yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, I think, I think you're right. Uh, very rare that I run into somebody who says, no, the universe is brutish and mean and just wants, and, and, and you know, will ultimately just kill us all. Uh, I mean, those people exist, I'm sure, but I don't run into those people, but the people I run into mostly don't want the the baggage of, of my faith. And, and I understand why they don't want my baggage, too. I don't either. I'd love to put my baggage down. Um... Uh, but but then we end up talking about a concept and then we can agree on a concept. Fine for that discussion, perhaps. But I don't want to go away believing in concepts. I want to actually trust in what God says. Do I trust in God? I think that's why I like, I like trust better than believe. But that's what it is. Just as Abraham believed God, that means just as Abraham trusted God, do I trust God? Most of the time, I do. And then sometimes, I get in the way of that. Sometimes, I struggle to trust in God because sometimes I think I know better than God. Sometimes, I, 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 I think that there are people who deserve to be dealt with very harshly and, and, and yet God doesn't seem to be doing that. So maybe I'll take up the mantle and do that myself. Um, you see, those are the moments when I realize that I'm not believing God. I'm believing in, but I'm also taking over the agenda. <laughs> because if I believe God, if I trust in God, then I am keen to see what God is doing and follow along in a supportive way as opposed to standing out front going, hey, God, come over here and catch up. Um, anyway, you know what? I'm just going to leave that thought with you and uh, see what you do with it today. And I'm going to just offer a prayer and we'll, uh, we'll start our week. So let us pray. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for believing in us and help us to believe you. May this time of wondering be a time when we hear your voice and trust it. A time when we come to understand what it is you ask of us and we deliver. God, may this time of wondering be a time when we grow in faith. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, that's enough for me today, but I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Until I get to see you, God bless you. Please know that God sees you and, and loves you. You matter to God a great deal. Um, but, but more than just seeing and loving you, God's love moves through you and into the world. That's what blessed means, that God sees you and that God's love moves through you into the world. You matter you make a difference. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.